welcome to Barbell Logic Rewind. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick, and I have the main kick, Matt Reynolds here, of course. We're doing this remotely with our good mics via Zoom.us, the best online conferencing tool that I know of. If there is a better one, I'd like to know because I'd use we it. You spend a lot of money with Zoom. You wouldn't believe be, how much money be, I spend. It would be nice to get a, hey, Zoom, it'd be nice to get a kickback from you guys. But it's great. There is that other video conferencing. There's several. But well, Skype is the other one, right? But we have converted completely over from Skype to Zoom, and we love Zoom way more than Skype. Yeah, before we kicked off online great books in a big way, I tested them all, you know, Citrix and Go to Meeting and Blue Jeans and all the screen sharing and video conferencing softwares, and Zoom has the best interface, the most reliability, the best recording interface, blah, 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 blah. Nobody else can touch it. But Today, we want to kick off what I think is a logical progression from the two stress recovery adaptation episodes that we've released here in uh, late January, early February, where we started to talk about that there are really only three things that you can do during programming. You can increase the intensity, you can increase the volume, or you can change your exercise selection. And there are a lot of things that you can do inside those three things, but all the changes that you can make boil down to one of those three. So we wanted to start what we're going to call our toolbox series, where we start talking about what are the tools in your toolbox that you can use to address specific programming problems. We're going to call this a toolbox MED number one. The problem we want to talk about here is for an early intermediate, we're through with LP. LP is over. So for an early intermediate that needs more stress, one. How do we know they need more stress? And then two, what tools in our little three-part toolbox, intensity, volume, or exercise selection, can we use to address that for the early intermediate? Okay, so uh, first off, let's look at this from sort of the bird's eye macro view. I think that's the first thing you have to look at. And we talked about this in both the SRA podcasts that we've done. We know that stress must increase over time, always. So the bird's eye view is stress has to go up. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, because this is a toolbox episode, is how do you know that stress actually needs to go up practically today or this week? Right. Because the answer isn't just jack the stress all the way up as high as it can go. No. The person can't recover from it, and it's not necessary, and we care about people. So so we don't want to just jack it up to the point that they can't recover and it kills them. So even though it has to go up. As a matter of fact, sorry to, to speak over you, as a matter of fact, it's actually, it behooves us to increase stress only enough, like at that minimum effective dose level, in order to get an adaptive response, right? Like if I can add, going back to LP, can I get an adaptive strength response by adding 30 or 40 pounds to the barbell the first few workouts? Yes. Yes. Should I? No, because I'm still going to get the strength adaptive response by adding five pounds, and it will let me stretch out the amount of time that I can continue adding intensity to get an adaptive response from an intensity increase, from that sort of stress increase. So here's the easy explanation. If I deadlift 150, if I'm a kind of starter guy, middle-aged man, and I deadlift 150 for a set of five on Monday, I could probably deadlift 180 for a set of five on Wednesday. I it's possible. That's true. I suspect know? that's true. And then I might even be able to deadlift, you know, 200 or 205 on Friday, but very quickly that stops. And so now I'm at 205 or 210 or 215 and I can no longer add weight and I'm only four or five workouts in. But if I add five pounds per workout, then that takes me over the course of several months and you won't stop at 205 or 210 or 215. You'll stop at 345. Yeah. And 355, whatever, right? So the three questions beautifully address this problem for people in LP, right? The three questions are, yes, uh, correct. am I resting and am I doing my recovery stuff right? Are the weight jumps appropriate? And what's the other one? I just lost my mind. Are you resting? Well, you did the same thing. And so eat enough. The, yeah. And right. Yeah. Yes. And, so, but the, the problem then becomes though in intermediate programming, they still, those three questions still apply, but it's not correct. quite as clear cut what's going on when you answer those three questions. So So here we are. If you go to an intermediate based programming, almost everyone would tend to move towards a heavy light medium or a Texas method style of programming post 
novice, right? Not everybody. Some well, people are going to go right to super advanced. But if you're moving towards, as you get into early intermediate, if you basically have a volume-ish day and a heavy-ish day, and maybe even a light middle day, give or take, right? Mm -hmm. Are we starting with those assumptions that were there, and now we need to know if we need to add stress? How do we know? Yeah, Is I that think a so. good question to ask? I think so. So let's talk about how to add stress moving from LP into intermediate. Let's start there. Right. Will that work? Is yes. That okay. Okay, so we need to add some stress coming out of LP. And we've already talked about, we have three possible things that we can do in the neuro variance on those three things. Three things are exercise selection. I'm going to take them backwards, volume, sure. and then intensity. Sure. So let's look at those three things in that order that I mentioned them. So we petered out on LP. Let's say that it's a man and he stopped for ease of math, three sets of five at 300. He got it. He went to 305 for the next session, Yahtzee. We're not into doing a bunch of resets, so it's time. So what do you do? Exercise selection. At this point, would we consider changing the mix of exercise selection? Right now, he's on the four big lifts. He's on the squat, the press, the bench press, and the deadlift. Could he benefit from not. box squats or anything else? Could he benefit from those things? The answer is yes, right? He could. I don't. I don't because it immediately starts to complicate things. Yeah, let, me, let me clarify that. You don't program that at this point. Right. I do not program exercise selection changes coming out of LP and moving into intermediate based programming with the one exception of I will occasionally as I start to transition somebody into a Texas method type split or a heavy light medium type split. I will occasionally if I am seeing a form problem yep. as the weight gets heavy in the squat, specifically the squat where they're getting loose in the hole or knees are sliding then I may program a tempo squat. That's the primary thing that I'll program there is on the light day, on the Wednesday day. If the Wednesday day is just there to sort of grease the groove and keep the motor patterns correct, then an easy way to make sure that my motor pattern is correct is just to slow it down. Yeah. So that's not an increase but, in stress necessarily. Right. You would program that for a remedial purpose to fix form. That's exactly right. So, But outside of that, I wouldn't change exercise selection moving into intermediate type program. I don't do it either. And I agree with everything that you said, but here's why I don't do it. Well, let me flip it. Here's why I would do it later for someone because their squat's so blasted heavy. I can use a variant, get them a great deal of stress, but the weight is lighter and it doesn't beat them up. Most variants require less weight, you know, and using a variant is normally something that we do to actually get them some work, but do it in a less stressful way. Yeah, or even what I've said is it's something like a tempo lift in any of the movements or a pause lift is very stressful, but it's not stressful on the joints, right? right? So it, they're actually, they can recover still quicker from those things. And so it's less weight. It's still a lot of stress. There's still obviously an adaptive response that occurs. There's a hypertrophic response that <laughs> would occur with that. Yeah. But in general, here's my argument against exercise selection coming out of LP. If in LP, volume is static and frequency is static, and the only thing that has changed is intensity is going up, 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 incremental increases, all at three sets of five on all the lifts other than the deadlift, which is one set of five, then I think that there is still some stress that can be pushed both in intensity by going up and mm -hmm. bringing the reps down, going up in weight and bringing the reps down to triples and doubles and singles. And also in volume, the thing about three sets of five is it's sort of the middle of the bell curve for both volume and intensity, right? And what I'm going to try to do in intermediate programming is I'm going to try to push one of those workouts deeper into the volume piece, right? So I'm not in the middle of the bell curve of three sets of five. I'm at four sets of five, five sets of five, maybe six sets of five, right? I might even get up to sort of like up to 25 to 30 work reps on the volume day. At the same time or in the same week, in the same general period, I'm also gonna push the intensity quotient so that I am pushing, I'm increasing stress two different ways in the same week. I'm increasing the stress from volume on Monday. So it's much greater volume and it's a more stressful event on Monday than an LP Monday is at three sets of five. Now I'm doing five sets of five or four sets of five. It's an increased volume from there. Therefore by its very definition, stress is increased. And on the Friday day, I'm going to 
I believe making the bar weight go up is also an increase in stress. It's a different form of an increase in stress, but it is an increase in stress. So I push stress both those ways, both directions. On one of those workouts, it's volume, and on one of the workouts, it's intensity. So to, I think it's a simple way to program it, to organize it. So to further clarify the toolbox idea, the variants, typically, I will use them to remediate form or to get them stressed without beating their joints up. They can mm-hmm. get some useful training or, or overload. I mean, I use them for overload too, right? So right. I'll do like, you know, a three-board press or a floor press or a rack pull or something like that to actually put more weight in their hands. And, you know, if I'm going to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure why that works. And a lot of me thinks it's just psychological. I know why it works. Like, we'll get to it in a minute. We'll get to that in the further more, future. Show. More than psychological? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's fine. So we overload. Yes, you're right. So the general consensus is between you and I and certainly most of our coaches is that we don't add exercise selection changes. We don't make exercise selection yeah. changes it, post you, LP and early intermediate. When you add a new exercise, you almost always end up backing off the intensity ends up being less stressful anyway. And we're trying sure. to add some stress here. So you would go and I would go to volume and or intensity heuristic for describing what happens, why we have to periodize at some point. Mm-hmm. Right. So is it optimal? Is it whatever? There are so many arguments about the Texas method, but it demonstrates beautifully the ideas that are necessary to understand and to implement when you get into out of LP. I think that no matter who you are or what you do, you end up undulating the volume yeah. and the intensity over some short period. In this case, it's five to seven days for the Texas method when you get out of LP. So in the Texas method, you are, which is for our purposes, is illustrative. Get to volume day. Now you said that you would go as many as thirty sets. I also want to say that Matt Reynolds, thirty sets, thirty reps. I'm sorry, thirty reps. reps. I also want to say that Matt Reynolds is the guy that recorded the show on Barbell Logic called Old Man Texas Method, where volume day can be fifteen reps. That's exactly right. And then Hamburg is the, the guy that goes three fives, four fours. Now we're at sixteen reps. Six triples. Now we're at 18 reps, four to five sets of four. We're at 20. So I do that, right? And all the way up to 30. So why would we do that? It's because we need that stress. Yeah, because we need the stress. And because when you start to think about quantifiable metrics, volume and tonnage are not the only metrics to show that stress is increasing. Intensity is also one of those things. As a matter of fact, again, coming back to our very most basic foundational principle, we believe that PRs in general, personal records, is the single most important metric. And that doesn't mean one rep max. And so if I can continue to push the weight up on Friday, I believe that heavier and heavier weight is not just a performance, but is an actual stressor in and of itself. It is a stress. It is a stress event. If you've ever pulled at one rep max, deadlift like in a perfectly straight line you shake you know you get to that tibial tuberosity a couple inches below your knee and it stops and you shake back and forth and then it finally breaks above the knee and then eventually slides up the thighs and you're okay like that's a very stressful event however it's probably not enough work in and of itself to drive the adaptive response we need to increase strength right it's clearly training stress It's just not a lot of tonnage. It's not an enormous amount of training stress. That's right. So if you go if you go to my Instagram account (laughs) here on the let's see at Scott what is your underscore silver strength you'll see a full tilt boogie limit attempt at (laughs) a deadlift. My father in law Todd pulls four oh five and it's a nine Mississippi lockout. Yeah, and how old is Todd? Todd's fifty four years old and he pulls four oh five. So it's fifty four year old guy pulling four oh five and works real hard. And he and I actually had this talk. I was like, hey, uh, did you just display something you already had and or was that a training stress? He's like, seems stressful to me. I said, hey, <laughs> I said, let's ask let's, him the next. That's day. what I said. I said, we'll talk. <laughs> that was Saturday. I said, let's talk about it Monday. Yeah. Well, he stove right. up as hell. I mean, he was clearly sure, he wasn't sore, but he was stiff. He knew his quads knew it. His rump knew it. <laughs> like it was yeah. clearly a training stressor for him. And it carried out, in fact, him being 54, that attempt, successful attempt, by the way, seems to have affected his press. You know, he had a volume day on the press scheduled for Monday, and it should have been a layup for him, but it was not. 
Yeah. So, you know, yeah, there's residual fatigue left right. over from this, not just performance right. from an actual stress. Right. So then why would you have him pull that single? That is the first single he has ever pulled in his career. Oh, really? Yeah. Because there's value in the PR. There's value in the yep. stress and in the in and intensity stress. This intensity cannot be the only metric used to show that we are increasing stress. Cannot be the only metric. Intensity cannot be, but it is a metric. It is. And it must be one of the metrics. But also, volume must be used as well. And tonnage slash tonnage, the combination of the two, to also show that we're increasing stress. But if you use only volume or only tonnage and never intensity, I think you're also leaving a major piece of the puzzle out. And so in order to increase stress at its foundational level, once you're post LP, I believe that both over time, volume can be used to drive stress and intensity can be used to drive stress. But in general, both must be used so, to drive stress. Let's do a little mental experiment here. Let's just program in our minds for our man who, who did a 300 for three sets of five, and that was the end of LP. Let's just add volume for this man. So okay. let's just go volume only. We're going to take a little weight off the bar. Sure. We're going to take so him. He was at 305. Is that what you said? We're at, I just said 300 for math. Okay. He's at so 300. Say what to... Let's take 10% off, which is traditional. Let's say 275 for easy so, numbers. So we'll put him at 275 and have him squat for four sets of five. Okay. Right. So his tonnage was 4,500. Now we're going to go to 20 reps at 275. So now this guy's tonnage is 5,500 in a session. Yep. Now let's just have him LP at 275 for four sets of five. Sure. How far is he going to get? It's, I think he's going to get 300 for four sets of five. I think he's going to get 295, 290, 295, 300, maybe even 305 for four sets of five at some point. Yeah. Just yeah. running kind of an LP with that increased volume. Sure. And I actually don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. But meanwhile, you've got the man to 305 for four sets of five. Like he can't right. get to 500. Get to 350. <laughs> or three, he can't get to 350. He can't get to 350. He can't get to 335. I mean, right. probably not. No, I don't think he's going to do that on four sets of five. Okay, so then will we just add another set of five at that point and back it off 10% again? So let's say he gets to 310. So we sure. back it off to 285 and have him go to five fives? You could, but obviously the point that you're making is, where does it end? At some point, you hit the wall, right? Is it at seven sets of five? Is it at eight sets of five? At some point, you can't keep adding volume in order to get a strength adaptation. And you don't get, you just don't get the weight on the bar. So we're just doing a little mental experiment here. And we know this is true from the results. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have done strong lifts, which starts them in an LP at five fives. We know that that right. doesn't work. So they do LP, which is good, and they do get stronger. I don't yeah. think I've ever For, seen anybody got to 300 on five fives of strong lifts. I know they're out there, but I hadn't sure. seen them. There's young kids. There's 18 and 20 yeah. year old kids that have done it for sure. And what's your experience? We have lots of people who come over from strong lifts. Listen, there are, I love as a matter of fact, the vast majority, 99.9% .9 of all programs are worse than strong lifts. Like strong lifts is better than them, oh, right? Strong lifts so, is great. And they make progress. In my experience, they make progress for about six weeks on strong lifts, right. maybe two months. Whereas on LP, you often make progress for three to four months. So it basically doubles the time that you're able to make progress because the volume piece of strong lifts is too much. Right. And the intensity piece of strong lifts is too little. Let's continue the volume mental game here. So we talked about five fives. Now let's talk about reps because we've just been talking about fives. Yeah, which I've done this, by the way. What you're about to explain, I've actually done this with both with barbell movements and with accessory movements. So instead of three sets of five, what if we did three sets of six? Well, if you did three sets of eight or 10 or 12. Well, but what if you incrementally increased it? What if you just went right. three sets of five? So let's say you've got 275. The okay. guy's doing three sets of five. We know he can do three sets of five at 275 because he did three sets of five at 300. Yep. Right. So he does three sets of five at 275. And so then the next time he does it, he does three sets of six mm -hmm. and then three sets of seven. Or maybe he does a set of six or two sets of six and a set of five. But overall, the total rep count continues to increase and then he eventually gets to 275 and he does three sets of eight right let's say he gets to now you add four sets of eight and then you add five pounds to the bar and you peel some reps off and then you run back up again sure it works for a little bit doesn't it 
It absolutely does. It's a way to increase volume and tonnage. If PR, personal records, personal bests are the goal, you can get them by increasing the sets and you can get them by increasing the reps. But it is my experience that you don't get much, that you can't really even get a 10%. You can't even get 10% on your three by five out of doing either of those. So if the guy ends up at 300, we're not going to drop him back a little bit at a four by five or add, you know, maybe a three by six, three by seven, three by eight, and then get him to 305 or 310 or 315. It just doesn't happen. Now, the right. person is probably stronger. If you could do 300 for three by five, and then later you can do it for four by five, you're clearly a stronger, hardier right. person. But then that's the end of the road by that methodology. So now what would we do to add stress to this person? Well, let's stop and then let's, in order to be fair and sort of be bipartisan in this, the same is true for intensity. If we do the same thing and we only drive intensity and so we go three sets of five and then we go two sets of five then we go one set of five and then we go, you know, two sets of three or one set of three and then a double or a couple doubles and then say, like, if you're coming in on two to three times a week and all you're doing is hitting one heavy set of one or two or three and the intensity will continue to go up over the course of you know i don't know a month Mm -hmm. or whatever at some point that stops as well you can't just come in and just hit a single well just hit a double just hit a triple well there are people that do that you know the famously chalet right sure but what was the deal with chalet he's already brutally strong the guy was already an 800 pound deadlift right Uh, he weighed 350 pounds there are people out there and, screaming PEDs too. There are people out there and yelling clear, drugs. And clearly PEDs, right? Which is fine. I don't, but the point is, is that we always want to try to talk about the middle of the bell curve when mm-hmm. it comes to population, right? I think that sometimes some people will complain via email to us or whatever, but what about the outlier? And mm-hmm. they're like, of course, man, there are always outliers, but that makes for a poor conversation when you have several hundred thousand people listening to a podcast and 99% or 95% or 96%, this will work for them. Spending an enormous amount of time talking about the outlier, that doesn't help anybody. As a matter of fact, it will actually hurt more people right. than it will help because some people think they're the outlier. And what we know is that if you only drive volume, it will only last a short period of time. You can't keep getting stronger, only drive volume. And if you only drive intensity, if you only drive intensity, especially at the sake of volume, if you continue to peel off volume just to drive intensity, that will only last a short amount of time. By the way, there are times for both of those. In the time as I'm going closer and closer to a competitive performance, to a meet, I will be pulling off volume and I will increase intensity, but it's only about two to four weeks worth of training time, and that's in order to completely dissipate fatigue and allow somebody to hit PRs at a competition. And then most often, immediately after that competition, I'm going to drive the volume quotient as much as I can, and I'm going to keep intensity down. And a lot of that is just because the person is sort of beat up and they're tired of chasing numbers. And let's just get volume and hypertrophy and let your joints rest a little bit and do that for three or four weeks before we start to bring the intensity back in. But for most people, for post-novice people, for early intermediate people, for intermediate people, we you and I and most of us will continue to drive stress and increase stress via increases in both volume and intensity and not usually in the same workout, although that will come with advanced training. In the beginning, it will be a volume will drive in stress with a volume workout and will drive stress with an intensity workout. And HLM and all styles of HLM will tend to do the same thing. And so again, those template-based programs are all very, very similar. People will say, Texas method, they'll say HLM, they'll say whatever other yeah, programming, man, whatever. Texas method, they're, whatever. They're all they're all the same thing. You've got That's some right. volume, you've got some intensity in there, and you can call it whatever the heck you want, but there's really no way around increasing the volume some and increasing the intensity some. And you can't do it in the same session. You can't do it in the same session. You can try That's if right. you want, and we've tried it with people, we've tried it with ourselves. You can try it if you want, but you can't do it very long. But we can titrate the volume on on monday for the old man texas method 15 reps four by four 16 reps 15 reps 18 reps etc 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 you can titrate the volume on and then you can also titrate the intensity on if you do it carefully you don't smoke the guy right you don't grind him to powder 
And you can get week after week after week after week of these weekly PRs. Real quick, because I think an important point that needs to be made here is we often talk about as we're trying to make changes to these variables that during LP, frequency and volume is the same and intensity keeps going up, right? And so we know that stress goes up. We can, in order to increase stress, we can keep volume the same and drive up intensity. And then we know that stress goes up. We can keep intensity the same and we can drive up volume. And we know that stress goes up. We can increase both volume and intensity at the same time. But how long can you actually do that, right? Like Mm -hmm. really, really quick, that sort of bonks. And we know that stress will go up if that's the case. After that, as you start to get into later intermediate sort of programming, that volume and intensity almost always have an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other one has to come down because you can't just keep adding weight to the bar and adding sets or reps to the bar or frequency. You can't do that, except what we're actually doing in this early intermediate phase is we're actually increasing volume on one day and increasing intensity on the other day. So we, in fact, are increasing both. And certainly the intensity day has a reduced volume and the volume day has a reduced intensity, but we are still driving stress primarily via volume on one day and intensity on the other. And so we sort of do get to do that in this early intermediate training. And you don't get to do that as much when you get to other training methodologies as you get further down the line, it becomes more and more difficult. You can't, once you squat 600 pounds for one, you can't squat 600 pounds for two, 600 pounds for three by three and six, you know, or six, oh, you can't keep going up on both. So you've pulled in the sevens, right? Back in the day when you were a better athlete, you know, when you were a younger man, sure, Matt, (laughs) I'm 40 now, by the way, this right. is the first podcast I've ever recorded mm-hmm. as a 40 year old. In the last half of your life. <laughs> Don't say that. Wait a minute. Uh, um, I'm living in 90. Probably. How many, how many times a year, how many times a year could you pull 700? Yeah, that's a good question. Four. Four. That's more than I would have guessed. Yeah, probably four times. But I mean, I was a pretty good, it really, this is the other thing is that, do you want me to be really honest? <laughs> no, lie to you me. Know who the, <laughs> you know who the best athletes, the freakiest dudes are that I've ever encountered in my life? Strong men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, it's not even close, dude. Three Think about weekend. this. How many power lifters on earth, power lifters that are not also strong men, how many power lifters on the planet can deadlift over 800 pounds? If you had to guess. On the planet, a, a 12? hundred, I don't know, a hundred of them. I would say 40. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say 40 people right now could deadlift 800 pounds. Right. How many could deadlift 900 pounds that are power lifters and not strong men? Three. Two? Yeah. Right. How many strong men in the world's strongest man can deadlift over 900 pounds? All of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> now. All of them. And the, some of them are the crazy, you know, donkey bar, you know, but. Yeah, yeah, but almost every one of them can deadlift 900 pounds on a regular bar. Now, they, on yeah, a they use straps bar. and they can hitch, and I realize that makes it. But the point is this. Something has occurred with those guys. Now, also, those guys have massive frames on them, right? We've talked about this before. You think about like Thor Bjornsson. Super, super uh, Brian Shaw. These guys are 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", 440, 455. Like that is, that's like, you know, Old Testament biblical <laughs> Goliath size. <laughs> Like, you're like, that can't even be a real thing. Yeah. Right? So the reason I mention that is because when you're competing for strongman, you actually, what I found is you can compete far more often because the movements and the exercise changes, mm. they change per, the events change every time you do a competition, right? It's not like powerlifting where you're just squatting, bench pressing, and deadlifting. There is always some sort of deadlift almost every time. There's some sort of deadlift. There's some sort of overhead event. It's axle or log or something. And there is always some sort of loading event, right? It's usually stones, but maybe it's sandbags or whatever. And so you have to tend to train that deadlift. You learn how to train the deadlift with an enormous amount of intensity and an enormous amount of frequency. Mm. And what you do is you pull off the volume as as you need to, right? So you get your volume from frequency, from lifting. You think about like lifting a 400 pound or 440 pound stone. And that's a deadlift, guys. I mean, that's, if you don't think that's, as a matter of fact, that might be the most taxing thing you could possibly do on your yeah, back. That's is, a deficit is, deadlift. Your knuckles is, are against right. the so ground. Your hands are on the ground, right? And it's, is, and and it's so those not guys on your back foot either. That's right. And so sort of, I know that's a long roundabout answer to your question, but 
The answer is in general, like if, and I, I was almost always competing when I did strongman, I also competed in powerlifting. I probably actually pulled over 700 pounds on a normal barbell four times a year. And I would do, you know, about five strongman competitions during the summer. And I would do about two powerlifting meets during the year. So I'd compete about maybe seven times. And, you know, that's what it would look like. But it's not that often. Yeah, so you can't do it very often. You know, so Todd, if you go see him on Instagram there, he pulls 405 there. Listen, 405 ain't 700, but it's his 700. There's no question sure. about it. And I think that he gets to pull that three or four times a year. I was going to say, when do you think the next time is that he'll pull 405 or over? I won't have him pull another single attempt for months and months and yeah. months. So I mean, probably it, June, right? I was thinking August. Right. Okay. Summer. And, and, you know, and the reason I programmed him to pull 405 is because he needed to do that. Like, he's sure. the happiest guy. Like, if you see right at the end of that video, he's the happiest guy in the universe, you know. Sure. But he might have been better off to actually do 375 for five that day. Yeah, probably not. But right? Probably so, not, but, but he make, needed make, 405. How long has he trained at your house? He's trained there for several he's years. For two and a half years, he's been my training partner. Three and this times is the first week. time you've ever let him hit a single. Like, you know what? That's okay. It's time. It's time to hit the yeah, single. And, we and, he, and we've out. talked about this before, but clearly some value there. And he learned some things about himself that he wouldn't have otherwise learned having not done that. So that's important. So we've talked about how to add stress via volume and intensity. Let's, before we wrap up the show, let's talk exercise selection for a second, right? Because there is, especially if we're using the toolbox, can we increase stress via exercise selection? Yes, we mentioned that. Do we tend to do it post-novice and going into intermediate? No, right? And we'll do an entire episode coming up on a toolbox about how we do use exercise selection to increase stress. But it actually works the same way with volume and intensity. With exercise selection, just as a teaser, you can do overload partial movements, which drive the stress via intensity increases, like a rack pull and a floor press and a board press. And you can do variants that increase range of motion or increase time under tension and decrease the weight. And those effectively add stress via increased volume. That's really what volume is, time under tension, right? And so things like tempos or pauses or deficit versions of something. And so you can increase stress those ways too. And we do that. We love those. We just don't tend to do it until they get into more later intermediate programming. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. So uh, to clarify all that, I'm not sure that we did as good a job uh, clarifying that as I would like. We talked about how you can drive uh, strength increases for a very short time by just moving volume up. And we also talked about how you could drive strength increases for a very short time by just moving the uh, intensity up. So just like a three by five is sort of in the middle of the bell curve of the volume intensity, you know, continuum that gets us good results in LP, varying both the volume and the intensity gives us a happy medium between those two stressors. And if we do that over a short time horizon, in this case for an earlier intermediate, it'd be a week, we can get uh, increases in strength, both volume PRs and intensity PRs for weeks and weeks and weeks. So in this case, our minimum effective dose is actually two things. It's increasing the volume and it's increasing the intensity. We can't do them on the same day for an intermediate, right. early intermediate. So we have to do it over the course of a five-day training cycle, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. You can call this program. You could write that out and put percentages in there and save it as an Excel spreadsheet and you could call it anything you want. But our experience shows us that that is the best way to get ongoing strength gains and more weight on the barbell for the early intermediate um, athlete. I think we'll call that one a wrap. Go to at Barbell Logic and uh, follow us there on Instagram. You can see all kinds of client PRs and announcements of new material that go out. It's not just podcasts, it's also uh, blog posts and papers and uh, YouTube videos. And so if you go on Instagram and subscribe there, you'll get to see when those things come out. And like I said, those PR videos, those are always fun. Give us a five-star review. So there is another Barbell Logic podcast. We'll be recording some more today and coming into your ear holes. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.